Well, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about geological processes, and we're going to focus primarily on uh, tectonic, tectonic plates and the evidences that support it. Most of us, when we think of geological processes, we think of them very boring and very static and not doing very much. But that's quite the contrary. They're very, very dynamic, and lots of things are going on beneath the Earth's surface. And even though it's happening at a very, very slow pace, uh, things are definitely changing our planet that, that are beneath our feet. Uh, today I'd like to, uh, first of all, talk about basically the three parts that are the, the major players in geological uh, processes. The inner core, uh, that's where uh, rock begins to melt, and as it, as it melts, it also will create basically new rock, new soil uh, as time goes on. And then just above that, surrounding uh, that inner core, is the mantle. That's the kind of the semi-solid uh, rock that um, makes up the bulk of our of our planet, and then we have the crust, that outer crust, and and it's if you take an apple and you look at the outer crust, that is about the same um, in in proportion uh, of thickness that it that it is on our planet as well, and the crust is made up of continental crust and oceanic crust, and the thing that drives it all basically is the uh, mantle uh, convection cell. It's this kind of conveyor belt that continues to uh, to operate so that it's constantly pushing up new soil, new rock, and bringing it back down to be remelted, etc. This also is driving the rock cycle as well, and we'll talk about that at, at, on a later uh, podcast. But all of this has to do with the recycling um, it, the, the soil itself. So the mantle convection cell is driving all of this. And the other thing that's going on is as these cells are working, it's creating these plates, or at least there's evidence that, it, that it's creating these plates that kind of float on top of this semi-solid mass of, of, of rock. And as it is conveying itself through this uh, mantle convection cell, it moves rock from an area that ha is relatively new to as it ages it's going to kind of submarine underneath the continental crust because the continental crust is just a little bit more uh, heavy and is pushing all that that soil back down and to be remelted again and in some instances there's fissures or cracks in the rock to allow some of this uh, uh, magma to come up through here and then cause lava to, to kind of form these um, these volcanoes. So um, those are just some of the processes that, that kind of make things happen. But now I want to show you some of the evidences uh, as well. Uh, I'm using a program here called My World GIS. It's, um, it's a very useful um, program to help students get uh, kind of visualize what goes on on our planet and we can add a variety of different kinds of data right on top of the map to kind of give us an indication of what's happening so the first thing I want to show you all is some of the medium earthquakes that happen on our planet and again this is a piece of evidence indirectly uh, uh, although it's kind of indirectly it's indirect evidence that shows that there are plates beneath our feet that are moving because those um, Earthquakes, and these happen to be just medium ones that, that I'm illustrating right now. I, I, I'm not giving, uh, get looking at kind of the the low, um, the Richter scale, the ones that are on a Richter scale of of uh, three nine and below, or six and above, uh, significant earthquakes. I just want to show you some of the medium ones, and you can see on this um, layer, you can see that it looks as though that it. All of these earthquakes are basically being generated on the boundary of, of all the plates. And as it's doing that, it must be some kind of movement on those boundary plates to get them to slide past each other or dive under uh, each other. But this shows us that the plates or, or something is, is definitely moving. And again, it, it tends to be associated with the plate boundaries as well. And um, if we go down a little bit deeper, you can see that uh, over here, there are some of these um, earthquakes that go a little bit deeper, which indicate possibly um, that those are the, the ones that are what we call the subduction uh, plates. As, 
as um, we have what we call a convergent boundary, what it's going to do is it's going to dip down. One side is going to dip down and, and kind of subduct itself or go underneath the crust. And that's possibly what's happening over here. Uh, another uh, piece of information is, of course, where we can find the volcanoes. Again, the volcanoes are not quite as as uh, it's not quite as detailed as, let's say, the uh, the earthquake one. It was it was pretty precise. You could see uh, the plate boundaries extremely well. But these two also, especially on the Ring of Fire, as we we call it, right through here, they are very well aligned themselves with the plate boundaries as well. So there's got to be some kind of activity going on. Uh, on those plate boundaries. So again, it suggests that there are movements on the plates in particular in, in the boundaries. But also, let's turn that off. Turn off another one. And this is uh, basically seismic activity. And this is the S wave. So when there is a there is some kind of movement between the two plates, it sends off these S waves. And S waves will travel very quickly through very solid materials, like for instance, uh, older, solid uh, 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 rock and soil. It'll travel faster through those. If it tends to be viscous or kind of molten or younger or less dense, it's going to take a little bit more time getting through it. Now, if you look at, at the bottom of this, you can see that um, these dark blues means that it travels very, very fast, whereas reds travel um, not as fast. And you can see in particular, and I want to show you over here because you can't see India. India is located right in this region right here and it has two plate boundaries coming across and um, this is where two plate boundaries are coming together and these are convergent. In other words they're coming together and as they do that it lifts the soil up, it lifts the rock up and it does that it's creating this huge mountain range, of course the Himalayas and um, if you notice all of the, most all of these are located inland. All of these areas where there's a fast S wave, they're uh, located inland. So they must be traveling very, very fast. So if we take a look at the slower waves, they happen primarily in the ocean. Why might that be? Well, again, as if you remember, um, these are divergent. That means the plates uh, in the mid-Atlantic and part of the Pacific are actually spreading apart, which allows um, all the um, molten magma to come up as it's creating new rock and creating new floor to the soil. It's pushing out the older stuff. So all this younger aged seafloor is receiving some fresh molten material. And so it's not traveling as fast, so it tends to be slower. So these line themselves with plates that are um, diverging in their activity. So that again suggests movement at some point along these plate boundaries. Um, and again, since we're talking about the seafloor, let's look at the uh, the seafloor itself and the ages. Again, if you take a look here on the bottom of this illustration, you'll notice that over here the dark reds are going to be um, very old, so uh, very old rock, whereas over here it's going to be young rock. This is right here. Let's see here, right here in the middle. This right here, all through here, the mid-Atlantic area, and this has relatively new soil or a new rock. This is the kind of the fissure or the space in between these diverging plates. And if we would draw this line here, if you follow this red line, where that white or yellow is, that is all going to be new type of, of rock being put down. And then what's happening, it's moving from the center out this way. And it slams into the continental crust. It's going to either um, basically slide underneath it, the continental crust, which most of the time it happens, or here on the east coast is going to push up some mountain ranges. So, and of course, in the Pacific, it has a little bit wider trench or ridge right in here. And that's also going to create it. So again, we're, we're seeing that the, the movement of the plates has something to do with, as it's coming apart, it's always adding to it. And like a conveyor belt, it's marching new rock all the way across. So there has to be some kind of movement. So again, we're seeing that 
this age of the soil, this differentiation of, of soil age uh, on the um, oceanic floor suggests that, again, there's movement. Then we look at uh, glacial deposits uh, right along in, in Africa as well as South America. Evidences that there were glaciers here at one point in time. And of course, there's big glacier. I mean, there's glacier and activity uh, and ice activity right down here as well. This suggests that possibly these continents were much closer, if not all put together all at once at some point in time. So this glacier activity, because there's certain kinds of rock, because as glaciers move, they move masses amount of rocks and boulders and soil. And we being we were getting to see the same kind of deposition here in Antarctic here on South America, here on Africa, India, and Australia, which suggests, again, if they were all together and formed this kind of supercontinent, they must have broken apart at some point in time. And one of the areas that, that I think is, is relatively fascinating is, um, is the fossil distribution. And if we, if we look at, let's just look at some of these, like, for instance, this right here is a... Um, Listosaurus, and this Listosaurus can be found, was found, fossils were found on Antarctica, here in India, and of course Africa. And the only way that probably could happen is if this was once, kind of like I said before, some supercontinent. Uh, they were kind of put uh, patchwork together at some point in time, and these boundaries of the plates eventually separated them so they would kind of find their own place or their own niche um, over time. And then also, it's just, you know, that uh, Lysosaurus is, was a land reptile. But then we have a kind of a, uh, an aquatic land, uh, almost an alligator-looking um, type of, um, of animal. And that had to be uh, the Mesosaurus. He is in blue right here. So we find it here on the continent uh, of South America, Africa. And, of course, there had to have been some kind of land bridge for them to be able to go from here to here. So again, more evidence that will show us that indeed there had to have been some kind of movement of plates. So let's go ahead and put the, the plate boundaries up. And there they are. I mean, they are like, for instance, uh, over here, this is the North American plate. Over here, uh, this is the Pacific plate. And then we have this little bitty plate right here. And that happens to be the Juan de de Fuca a plate and uh, the Nazca plate. They're all um, kind of going in, in a little bit different directions. For instance, the North American plate is going in this direction here. Pacific plate is going in this direction. And, it, you know, scientists say in, in like 30 million years, uh, San Francisco and L.A. will be very close together. And um, that will be kind of, a, kind of an interesting thought to see how much different the, the planet is going to be. Um, in this particular case, like in California here on the West Coast, with these uh, three kinds of, um, we have a convergent plate going right here. So we have three different kind of motions all right here on the West Coast of the United States. That's why there is so much activity in, in Oregon, Washington, California, because all that seismic activity and geological processes that are going on is really condensed because of these plates. And if you want to actually include the uh, Nazca plate in that as well, because it has a converging plate on it t as well. So all of this west western part of North and Central and even South America, very, very active uh, geologically. So when we put that all together, we get a kind of a picture uh, of all the various evidences that definitely have formed our planet and also for plate tectonics. So I hope this has helped uh, understand how plate tectonics uh, um, can definitely shape our, our, our planet and you get an opportunity to see six of the different kinds of evidences that are there. Are there. So we hope to see you in the computer lab as we'll be able to do um, uh, this lab of evidence for plate tectonics together. So we'll see you later. Thanks.